Hey guys, I hope you are well. If you have been taking photographs or making videos for some time, you have probably already experienced the moment when you run out of space on your computer hard drive. This is easy to solve by buying a bigger hard drive, especially when the price for gigabyte of storage gets lower every year. But with more data comes also an increased need to archive and backup of your precious memories. So if you are not archiving at all, or are trying to find a way how to do it, then stay with me to see how I have resolved it for myself. Obviously, you can buy an online storage and upload all your files to a cloud. You will be able to access your files from anywhere and from any device as long as you have internet connection. That sounds like the best solution and is by far the easiest, but not necessarily the cheapest. This solution also means that you are giving away your precious data to a third party, to someone else. And I don't find that comfortable. Who can guarantee that I will not lose the data or the data will not be stolen? I can imagine that if anything like that happens, all you get back is an apology and maybe a discount on future services. Conditions of these services also change. They lure you in on cheap unlimited storage and in a couple of years you end up paying a lot more than the original price. Because it's hard to leave something that is so convenient and you've got used to it. So the idea is to keep our files at home and manage our archive ourselves. One option is to get an external hard drive with a backup function like this My Passport from Western Digital. That is a good solution for automatic backups you just plug it in, install the software and that is already on the hard drive and select what files you want to backup and how often you want it to check for new versions and synchronize them. I have been using this for over a year now and although it works and definitely adds a peace of mind, the file structure is not easy to use and I also ran into problems with the archiving software more than once. I try to avoid these issues by doing my backups manually using simple external hard drives, but the need to regularly copy over a lot of data from one drive to another adds time and is not easy to keep up. So to solve all this once and for all, I have got myself a Network Attached Storage Unit, or NAS, from Synology. The NAS combines security of automatic backup while storing the data on physical hard drives and accessibility of the data from any device and location where you have internet connection. I don't have a lot of data so this basic model with space for two hard drives will be sufficient for my needs. I have installed two 3TB hard drives simply because they came with the NAS but even this basic model can run up to two 16TB hard drives. Assembly of the unit is very simple, the hard drives just slide in and are fixed using provided screws. Synology is known for the quality of their products and it shows. The mounting holes and hard drive slots are dampened with rubber, so the NAS will be very quiet while in operation. You can use the NAS as an offline backup solution by connecting it to your computer with a USB cable, but it really makes sense to use the provided LAN cable and connect it to your router. Pretty much any router will work, even the one you have got from your internet provider. Then just turn on the NAS and head back to your computer. Type find.synology.com to your browser and continue from there. I chose the basic installation, which requires very little post-installation setup. Choose your server name, username and password. After the installation is finished, you should see the welcome screen with system health checker and a resource monitor in the bottom right corner. You can play around with what you want to see, but for now click on DSM help and then store files to Synology NAS. Follow the guide to map the NAS as a network drive in your Windows. Now go back to the web interface, click on Control Panel, File Services, Advanced tab 
and tick Enable Windows Network Discovery to allow files access via SMB. Click Apply and head to Windows. Open File Explorer and there under Network Places you will find your NAS server under the name you set up during the initial installation. Double click will take you to the root folder structure that was automatically created during NAS installation. Now you can copy over your files to the NAS, access the files, open and edit them. The basic Synology NAS installation on a two hard drive system will use the first drive as an active drive where you work with the files and the second drive as a backup of the first one. It creates a mirror image of the first drive so in case any of the drives starts failing you can just replace it and the NAS will mirror contents of the other drive onto the new one. There is a lot more functionality and things you can do with the NAS system from Synology. You can for example also set it up as FTP server and download and upload files on it from anywhere. As long as it's online of course. But for now let's do one more useful change in the settings which is so called wake on LAN. This feature will put the drive to sleep when you decide so the hard drives and the NAS cooling fan will not be in operation when not needed. Go to the web interface, control panel, hardware and power and in the general tab click enable WOL on LAN. Hit apply and go to the power schedule tab. Click on create and set up startup and shutdown time of your NAS. Then click on save. You can also change how long it will take for the NAS hard drives to hibernate after being inactive and enable automatic power off. Make sure you hit apply to save all your changes. Those are the basic settings I have found useful to have. Now you can have all your photos and videos safely stored on the NAS at home. That is a great thing, but imagine you are outside having a beer with friends and want to show them your favorite snaps from your last week's shooting. With NAS from Synology, you can do it from the pub on your phone. So to be ready for this eventuality, open your smartphone and download DS Finder and DS File apps from the App Store. Log in using the same details you have set up at the beginning of your NAS installation. The DS Finder app is there for you to check that everything is ok. The DS File app will allow you to open, browse and download your photos and other files saved on your NAS. And that's it. Simple and effective archiving solution. I am really happy with my decision to go this way and hope this video helped you in setting up your own NAS. Or at least that it reminded you to really start backing up your data. The hardware we use, being it computers or cameras, can be replaced, but our precious data, memories and experiences cannot. So keep them safe and let me know what you use for archiving your photos and videos as well as tips for how to maximize the use of the Synology NAS system. Have a nice day and hit the subscribe button if you want to support this channel. I will see you with the next one.